Christmas Day of 2012 is a day that will not be soon forgotten. Children waking up early, opening presents. A typical Christmas morning. However, earlier in the week, members of the National Weather Service began to anticipate severe weather with the possibility of tornadic activity. That afternoon, the thunderstorms began to move into the Mobile area. Well, this one, this one developed about 10 miles south-southwest thereabouts of of Biolabatry, and I, I happened to be on the radar at the time when we saw the system. It had a very strong rotational signature in it, and uh, we issued a tornado warning uh, at, at that time at about, uh, at about 4, 420, I believe, thereabouts, for, uh, for Mobile County. And this, all of these storms are moving very quickly. We had a very charged, energetic atmosphere, and storms are moving at 50 to 60 miles an hour very quickly. Uh, so the storm raced into, into southern Mobile County and then continued very quickly uh, towards the Midtown Mobile area and across. As the thunderstorm activity moved toward the Midtown area, it spawned what can be described as a strong, classic tornado. The storm initially uh, started uh, near Dolphin Island Parkway and it continued uh, nearly northward up towards uh, southern Pritchard. And it was during that period, it, it, it sat down and it uh, uh, caused some initial damage uh, to uh, some homes and, and, and trees uh, and then uh, hit Murphy uh, and continued on and generally staying on the ground but varying in intensity during the time uh, in, until it uh, finally weakened. We saw, uh, you, you could tell it was in the process of weakening as it neared Pritchard. This tornado uh, produced uh, a range of EF0 to EF2 damage. And EF2 damage is like uh, about a 110 to 130 miles an hour. It would be comparable to a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, and this system, th th this tornado, when it first set down, produced more damage in that EF1 range. Uh, and then it picked up an in intensity, unfortunately, just as it was moving across the Midtown portion of Mobile hitting Murphy High School, hitting uh, Trinity and several other homes. But it kind of wobbled between that EF1 and EF2 intensity. So it's, it's, it's kind of like experiencing a Category 3 hurricane. The, the storm itself, if, if I had to separate it from the fact that it was Christmas Day and it's time, I would say would be what we would call a classic uh, strong tornadic thunderstorm. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay, we can check that right here. Wow, Nicholas. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. In an ever-changing, high-tech global economy, technical know-how is a must. And preparing students to meet those demands is what we do. With more than 150 class choices available, 
let us help you find an interest to jumpstart your career. Career technical education. It's not college, it's high school. Learn today's high-tech skills and get prepared for career and beyond. Well, I think I monitored the weather all day Christmas Day just with the forecast of uh, the Christmas evening, uh, weather deteriorating, the storms were on the way. So we just, just being around the house the majority of the day, I kept my eye on the weather. But I got a phone call from my son who works with Mobile PD, who was actually working that evening in the Dolphin community, Dolphin Street area. So he was actually, first call I received was from my son working. He said, Dad, a tornado hit in the Murphy District. I believe it got your school. So I got that information. I said, up, oh, I got to go. Uh, I learned that a tornado had hit the campus of Murphy High School at 10 minutes after 5 on Christmas night. Uh, Tommy Sheffield, facility uh, executive manager, called me and said that he was on his way to Murphy campus, that uh, he understood that there had been some damage to the campus. I was actually talking to him when he arrived on the campus. I pulled up on the South Street side and I'm just kind of thinking, well, you know, uh, we didn't have much damage because I came in from South Street and all of those buildings were in fine. They're, they were in pretty good shape. It was dark now, there's no power. So other than the truck headlights, I'm looking, well, darn, we did pretty good. So I pull in around the tennis courts uh, at the band area, band building. And that's when I said, oh my gosh, uh, we've had a direct hit. And as he walked through the debris and went into the buildings, uh, as he moved along, he said, uh, he told me, he said, Mrs. Peake, this is bad. He said, we have a lot of destruction here. Uh, when he went into the auditorium at Murphy, uh, he said, Miss Peak, there is an absolute waterfall from the balcony into the main area of the auditorium. And uh, as he walked along, he described the, dis the destruction on the Murphy High School campus. Severe weather is nothing unusual for the Gulf Coast. Hurricanes are a common occurrence. However, strong tornadoes are unfamiliar to most residents. I've seen it, unfortunately, with Katrina. Uh, and that's the first thing that, that, you know, seeing hurricanes all of our career here living in Mobile, you've seen a lot of catastrophic building damage. Uh, never, though, from a tornado from my experience. So when I saw it, uh, you know, it was just overwhelming. And I guess the main thing that really stood out to me is this is Murphy, it's historical. And I'm looking at all the canopies that were just, you could not walk the campus because all the canopies were removed from the building, physically removed. And I'm seeing all this 1920 lumber, it's huge timbers just everywhere. Everything we do is about the children and the staff, uh, not to disrupt the educational process. What are we gonna do? So immediately I knew we had to take you know, instant action. Uh, I called a contractor. We have a pre-approved contractor that, that stand by that will commit 100% their resources and material time and effort as a priority in catastrophic events. And probably by 6.15, 6.30, uh, they were on Murphy's campus with us. Uh, walking, flashlights, uh, assessing. And uh, they actually mobilized Christmas night to uh, bring their resources in and help us uh, start the process of picking up the pieces. Early the next morning, as damage assessments were being made, the task of cleanup began. The next morning, I, I guess our, you know, we, we broke up into different teams at, at that point the next morning because there was so many things we had to address immediately. You know, was securing the powers, make the campus safe was the first and, uh, priority. And by doing that, we uh, coordinated the utility cutoffs, the gas, the power, so forth to make the campus safe. 
uh, we started the debris removal in the past that we could even access the building. We had to remove debris from certain areas of the campus just to be able to access and make an assessment of the damage. So the first priority was uh, safing up the campus and at the same time we were making individual building assessments. I got on campus right at daybreak. I was just in shock. Uh, I walked from the field house parking lot up through what was the baseball facility and then the portables where they used to be. And then around behind the, uh, the behind room and tried to crawl. Well, we, I was with resource officer, Mr. Sylvester, and we, we crawled through the rubble to get to the front of the campus. And I just couldn't believe what I saw. I knew we couldn't open the campus. It was physically uh, unsafe. Uh, structurally, the campus, the debris, the whole uh, the whole community was unaccessible for the standard everyday uh, public. So I knew Wednesday uh, we could not reoccupy. So uh, talking with the superintendent, Ms. Pete, uh, we had to very quickly develop a plan. At that time, uh, when everyone was on campus, and of course the facilities crew was there as well as the contractor, it was determined in the, at that time that Murphy High School could no longer be occupied. That indeed we were going to have to find another location for the 2,300 students and the 110 plus faculty members uh, that had called their school home before Christmas. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, do small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm going to be in. I just felt like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So, what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything? Any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress yeah. reports today? So, how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. Once it was determined the Murphy campus could not be used, the question then became what to do with the Murphy staff and students. We wanted to make sure that the Murphy students were back in school like the rest of the students. We wanted to make sure that learning continued. We wanted to make sure credits were earned so the students could graduate and move on to the next grade level successfully. We also had a commitment to make sure that all of our students were safe and secure. They'd already been through a traumatic event with the tornado. And when you can bring students back into school, get life back onto a regular routine, it's extremely important. We met the next morning, you know, and our first question to ourselves is where, where are we gonna go? Where can we put uh, 2,200 students and a staff? Where can we house them? So we started going through a list of ideas different schools, different campuses, and uh, you know, it was just a decision. We had to make the best decision we could concerning the circumstances we were dealing with and how would we address it. Well, we considered all the options that were possible. Uh, we looked at possible school locations, uh, where there was room, did we need to divide the school into different grade levels at other locations? Uh, what could we do double sessions? Uh, where could we best accommodate the students and make sure that learning continued and that the students graduated on time? We wanted to be together. Um, that was really important. Uh, because the kids were devastated uh, 
not as, as the adults. So we felt we needed to be together. We needed to carry on the same activities that we normally do in the spring. We, we needed as much normalcy as possible. Um, of course, transportation, uh, location was an issue for us. For us. Uh, being able to have uh, facilities where we could practice um, or some facilities where we could practice and we're areas large enough where we could assemble the students together and, and meet with them. Those, those were things that we talked about. Finding a site to accommodate Murphy students proved to be challenging. However, the decision had to be made in a short period of time. After careful consideration, a solution was found. The decision was made to use Clark Shaw because it had been a former high school site. Uh, the size of the campus and also the facilities that were there uh, were, would accommodate the high school uh, program as well as the academics and athletic programs. Uh, the size of the school campus, uh, the amount of land that was available there to locate modular units, as well as the uh, size of hallways in, a, uh, in an additional building that we could use. Um, it was a former high school campus and therefore uh, was the best location for us to move in the students and the staff. The day after the tornado hit was a holiday and I came to work and I was in my office working when I got a call from the superintendent's office to come to the central office. I didn't have any idea what she wanted, um, so I really didn't know what to think. When I got there, Ms. Fox met me in the parking lot and told me that Ms. Peek was going to ask me about them coming here. Ms. Peek kept me in the loop. Um, I met with her leadership team, uh, with Mr. Sheffield and facilities, and um, we had several discussions and meetings, um, and I was, I was in those meetings. for for input or to answer questions of, about what we needed. I knew that it would be fine. I have a faculty and staff that will pull together and do whatever needs to be done, no matter what the situation is. And I certainly did not mind at all being part of the solution. It was a huge team effort in, and decision-making process that we all came up with. Clark Charles the place and we're gonna make it happen. The scope and also the timeline for the move was vast. Uh, we wanted to move quickly. We wanted to get our students back in school as quickly as possible. We had a commitment to make sure their learning continued as well as making sure our students graduated on time. Uh, we talked about the portable units. Uh, I've seen it done in other places throughout the country when uh, catastrophic takes these buildings down modular units, if accessible, uh, would solve our problem. Well, I, I think uh, Wednesday, we decided we've got to have a location. So we picked Clark Shaw. Uh, we rolled out the blueprints, started scratching our head where we're going to get power, water, uh, and uh, surface conditions. There's a lot of things we had to assess real quick. So what happened at that point? We shifted gears from Murphy. It was in good hands with our contractor at Murphy. We pulled his resources with us and went to Clark Shaw and started trying to figure out how we would build this village uh, efficient, productive, and the main concern is satisfying all the needs of the children and the staff the best way we could to make it a normal functioning school. Just days after the Christmas tornado hit the campus of Murphy, 70 modular buildings began arriving at the Clark Shaw campus. While they were being delivered, the Mobile County Public School System's IT department began the process of moving all the usable technology from Murphy to the Clark Shaw campus. Uh, when I arrived on site, uh, Mr. Sheffield told me that we were going to have to remove uh, a lot of the technology out of the school. Our IT staff began to move that equipment the, that day. They were all called in off of vacations and uh, came in and we moved it all to Clark Shaw. Uh, once we got it there, we had a contractor, Ari Jones, helped us to get the uh, equipment installed and the correct portables in the classrooms at their new location. There were two more logistical hurdles to overcome. How do you transport Murphy students to Clark Shaw? 
and how do you feed both Murphy and Clark Shaw students in one cafeteria? Well, we knew early on uh, when the tornado struck uh, and the damage that was done to Murphy High School, we knew that uh, we had to step in and do what was necessary to make sure that we got our children uh, to the new Clark Shaw um, slash Murphy High School. And uh, so our team jumped right in there and made it happen in terms of logistics. Uh, there were a lot of things we had to put in play and consider. And um, more importantly, I guess safety was pretty much the, the very first thing that we, we, we had to consider and put in place before putting a plan and, and executing the plan. Anything dealing with logistics, I mean, we're talking about traffic conditions, uh, the congestion of, of traffic, you know, and the time of morning to, uh, to move the number of children that we're moving to from one side of the, t uh, the city to, to the next. And uh, it, it, we put a lot of hours into it in terms of making it uh, happen. Um, obviously, safety was one. Uh, traffic flow was another. Uh, making sure we had enough buses. Uh, make sure we had enough drivers, having the personnel on ground to make sure that uh, the buses got in and out safely and uh, make sure the children are, uh, stood in a safe location at the old Murphy High School. And those are the kind of things we had to consider once we started working on a plan. It was a matter of trying to figure out how would we serve all these people and to combine two cafeteria staffs. And I guess one of the things at Clark Shaw and Murphy is the cafeteria was basically the common ground for all the students there. And so it was just a matter of working out how would we do it all in shifts that we actually served Clark Shaw students first and then we'd serve the Murphy students and then we had to come up with lunch waves so that we could control how many kids were actually in the cafeteria at one time. We had to have come up with basically common menus for the two because there is a difference between the middle school and the high school menus by uh, the portion sizes, that type of thing. So we had to just sort of reshift menus and make sure that we could work out for uh, all the people. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, Obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay, we can check that right here. Wow, Nicholas. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, do small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm gonna be in. I just feel like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech, start your future today. On January 7, 2013, just 13 days after the Christmas tornado, Clark Shaw and Murphy students returned to school. In less than two weeks, the Mobile County Public School System employees, partners in education, and contractors were able to move over 2,300 students and staff from Murphy High School to the Clark Shaw campus. Less than six school days were lost for these students. It still amazes me, uh, you know, because there's so many things that uh, in my position, uh, orchestrate and trying to pull it all together. I don't see all the details, but when you go out there, after it's all kind of settled and you can visually look at what you've done and what your team, the staff, the whole company's done, it's truly amazing. I mean, because we took, we've got a population on one campus of probably 3,500 people plus that are cooking breakfast and teaching kids and libraries and bands and uh, 
hadn't missed a beat. When we realized what a huge undertaking this was going to uh, be, um, all the divisions here at Mobile County got together. We sat around the table, discussed these plans. Uh, it, was, it was like teamwork at its finest. Um, facilities was in there helping us to make decisions of what we needed to do. Of course, they were over it. Technology was in there. Um, Miss Peak, the leadership of Miss Peak, making sure that everything was taken care of so the students at Murphy could be right back in school, uh, ready to uh, assume classes. Uh, it, was a, it was an incredible experience and makes me feel like that we can basically accomplish anything we want. Everybody, since, since December 25th, I think everybody who's played a role in this just stepped up to the plate and worked well together. Uh, teamwork has been the main concept. The superintendent has uh, spoke on that. She, she's hammering the uh, teamwork concept home and I think for the most part everybody's doing that and so and even the students, I have to give Murphy students uh, their praise. I know this is uh, a trying time for them. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they have stepped up and, and done a tremendous job in being uh, um, accommodating in this whole ordeal and the staff as well. So, I told Ms. Peek that I always wanted a high school, that I always wanted Clark Shaw to be a high school and I just didn't know that we were going to become one so quickly. But it has worked well. I mean, you really wouldn't notice a lot of difference in the campus. Uh, except for the portables and the high school students here. When they first got out here they were all saying they wanted to go back home and they were thinking maybe we could go back home in a few weeks and uh, we told them that no they would have to finish here and they accepted it. They became a closer group. We all became closer because of, of just the nature of being in, in these closed quarters and they're used to having an open campus and being able to roam especially during lunch all over campus and it was an adjustment for them. But we had the best graduation that we've had since I've been at Murphy, and it was, it was special. We are committed to having the students back on the Murphy School campus in August. Murphy will continue to be the symbol of education in Mobile County. Uh, we're committed not only to repairing Murphy, but to finding the funds that are needed to renovate Murphy to 21st century learning standards and to restore Murphy High School for future generations. So there is a lot of work to be done, but as we've seen, uh, the, the school community come together and also the support from the entire community, we know that this can be accomplished. Uh, Murphy is still the viable uh, school that it always was, and the future has just great potential for it to continue. On May 13th, Murphy High School seniors graduated. Construction crews continued to rebuild Murphy. Students were returned to the campus in August of 2013, less than nine months after the Christmas Day tornado. Whoever said a tornado could slightly dampen Panther Pride was wrong. It started for me when I went into the first grade and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School and from there to Williamson where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. 
Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education.